showers are forecast. And in Yorkshire, that doesn't mean light. That means heavy showers. Therefore, the garber is on. As are the longer uh, bibs. And I'm gonna have some overshoes as well. Plenty of honey has gone on the oats. How are you all feeling? Ahead of stage four. Perky? Yeah, I think we're okay. I think if the weather uh, stays on our side, that will be the key. Thing. One thumbs up, Tony. Yeah. Oh, oh. Paul, come on, you're not gonna disappoint. No comment. No comment, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm not quite as perky <laughs> as Phil and Tony, but anyway, see you in a little bit. The good shit three days of Yorkshire is about to set sail. Yeah, do we go? I've not pedaled yet, Phil, so Paul's that's doing the short rig. <laughs> Goodbye, Laura and Jamie. Welcome, one and all, to a video which, as you'll see, is one I prefer not to make. Commencing with a hugely enjoyable and fulfilling morning riding with friends on the sensational stage four of the three days of Yorkshire. Thank you, thank you. Stage four looked like and turned out to be an excellent stage to see how my body would respond to much higher volume and intensity over three days than I've ever done before. Having set off in stage four, we set up our usual pace line, albeit early on we had to stop to fix an unexpected puncture. Here we go, fellow 29, providing the roadside assistance. Not quite as good as a spare bike being on the top of the car, but this is pretty much luxury in terms of tyre changing. The first big climb, the full trapping hill to cattle grid, came at about 60 kilometres into the stage. It's 6.9 kilometres with an average gradient of just 4.2%. And on each of the three steep ramps, Tony Cope, aka Top Cat, did not disappoint, deploying his shock and awe accelerations. Before the final steep ramp to the cattle grid, there's a beautiful descent, absolutely loved it. And off he goes again. That boy doesn't seem to differentiate between 400 watts and 800. Absolute maps. There he goes. W Prime. Pissing out of the top cat. Thank you. I had to go really hard on this climb just to keep pace with Paul, who was riding his tempo was a good climb for me, with average power of 260 watts and normal eyes of 275, demonstrating the use of my top end power on the steep ramps, but laying off a bit on the flats and also off on the descent. It was a PB time for me with 22 minutes and seven seconds, but the last time I did this was during the Struggle Dales, where I think it came much later into the 170 kilometer route. Three very steep ramps. As you can see, this is a sublime descent, but I reckon an even better climb. <laughs> there we go. Chocolate brownies. You can tell we're in Yorkshire. We got the pork pie. Thank you. Um, At about 90 kilometers came Green Howe, two and a half kilometers with average gradient 8.9%, but with much steeper ramps in the first two thirds. And it was here that I learned that I probably went just a bit too deep on Trapping Hill. There he goes. I decided once again to try and hang on to Paul's wheel, who had decided to ride a consistent but infernal high power. And Phil Rich, Tony Cope and others all accelerated past. And here, as I slowed up a little bit, Paul comes by and then goes on to reel everybody else in who had gone by earlier. Sorry. Nice. Ooh. 
As you can see, the rain was holding off and a beautiful day, all in all, invigorating. And please do like and subscribe if you're enjoying this. It'd be very much appreciated. Up, up, up. As you can see, it's much more beautiful and shallow towards the top. Notwithstanding Tony, Phil and Paul all dropping me, it was still a decent climb for me personally, with the official KOM clocking in at 11 minutes and 16 seconds, 13 kilometers an hour, 276 watts, just two seconds off my best when fresh. Tough old day today. The legs, they're not at their best. Very relieved the TC came back for me. Poor E, still got another 90k to go or so. With my rejuvenation well underway and now taking turns in the front, this was turning into a decent stage for me. Even the left right balance was 50 50. But things rapidly changed at 119 kilometres while coasting the final 40 kilometres to the finish. Where, as you'll see, my world fell apart. Spirits are a little bit better. After Greenhow, I almost imploded. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. Emergency carbohydrates, Tony, turn me, you name it. Great, what are we going to say? I was going to say that. Thanks for the tow. I really appreciate it. Well, me, I can't come around again. And in the moment comes the difficult bit. And if you don't like seeing a badly scarred person, please turn away. <coughs> and also to add that for obvious reasons, the videos are going to be less frequent for a while, but will gradually resume, including how I'm going to manage my recovery and pivot the year to enjoy my cycling and health and fitness related activity in safety. And to also say massive thanks to everybody for all of your very kind support. So all did not go well in the final 40 kilometers of the three days of Yorkshire. It was a wonderful event right up until that point. I was going down a hill, round a bend, and suddenly we came to one of those roads in Yorkshire where you go from two lanes down to just the one. Cars were stopped. I hit the brakes hard, too hard, went over the handlebars, and I spent the last 11 days in Leeds Infirmary Hospital. Massive thanks to everybody, all the doctors and nurses and staff that have nursed me back to health. Massively appreciated. They needed to basically stabilize fractures in my spine, my C5 and T8. It's gonna take another basically six weeks at least until I'm not wearing this neck brace and you can see this chest brace to keep the spine nice and straight and stable and keep the weight off the spine. I also need to repair a fracture in the jaw, a big break in the jaw, which has been done, albeit the teeth still need repairing by my dentist. I needed plastic surgery in a couple of places in the face. And to be honest, I've had all kinds of headaches and pain across all of this pre-op and obviously post-op. Here's a few little clips from the hospital from my phone. One of them was just after the op when I was high on all the pain relief, the come down over the next couple of days was horrendous, I can report. Well, welcome, one and all, to my hospital bedroom in Leeds. Today is a Friday, and the crash on the last day of the three days of Yorkshire was last Monday. Since when I've been here in Leeds Hospital, spirits very low indeed, waiting for a couple of operations. One on the jaw and the facial area. I've got a big fracture in the jaw. I broke my teeth and I got various lacerations to the face, but I need a different set of doctors to operate on the spine where again I have various fractures. And I keep um, fasting for the operation and getting just far enough up the waiting list to just not make it into the operating theatre. Hoping that's going to be different today. So spirits are well and truly low because the real healing process isn't going to start until the operations have been had. But the nurses here at Leeds Hospital have been absolutely incredible. Really grateful to everybody here. I'm just hoping to make it into the operating theatre 
very shortly. I'll report back. On all, and I mean all, the painkillers. Life is good. It's just day 11 since the crash. We're in a hotel, um, a hotel room that Jane has been using um, while I've been in hospital. She's been visiting me. It's here in Leeds, I'll probably stay here another day. I'm not gonna be able to have my teeth fully fixed for another six weeks. So as you're gonna see in the fridge, it's very much not solids on the menu. If you've got a baby, you'll recognize, well, you'll recognize Ella's Kitchen. And indeed it is Ella's Kitchen on the menu and it has been on the menu for the last 11 days. I'm also using Huel. It's a vegan protein that's got a full range of amino acids, but also good quality fats and carbohydrates and definitely it's filling me up. I don't have much of an appetite right now, but yeah, very much baby food is what's going down at the moment. Clearly it's not going to be business as usual. I'll try and plot some of the recovery and what I do to maximize the recovery. I'm definitely not going to rush it. I'm going to get a physiotherapist um, and take professional advice and all of this. I also want to say a massive thank you to Tony Cope, Phil Rich, Chris Forster and Simon who I was riding with at the time of the accident. Thanks ever so much for your actions, holding me still and steady, keeping my spine straight, preventing further injury, calling the ambulance, guiding it in, keeping me calm and safe uh, for 40 minutes until the ambulance arrived. It's because of your actions that I'm able to walk and I've been advised by a physio who I'm working with, Phil Burt in Manchester, when the vertebrae are fully repaired and the braces are off, I'll be working up there with him, that I'm able to cycle very, very gently here on the Watt Bike Pro. It's better for my recovery and spinal health than walking, it puts less stress on the spine, but because of your actions, I have the mobility. So thank you all very much, massive respect to you all. I'm eternally grateful. In the meantime, whoever you are and whatever you do, please remember to live thrive, stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you very much. Take care.